Hey everybody, Cheryl here. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today I have a, a fall themed card. Actually it's a Thanksgiving card on the inside. It says Happy Thanksgiving. But um, it's featuring a My Favorite Thing stamp set called Harvest Mouse. And I think it's last year's set, but it's new to me. So this is the first time I'm using it. I'm usually kind of late in the game with stamps. It's hard to keep up with all the new stamps that come out, but I bought the coordinating die and um, I did a color map. If you've seen a few of my other videos, I do color maps for the little critters or the stamps so that I have a reference and I just keep it in the stamp pocket and I make note of the different Copic markers that I've used to create um, the coloring for each of these and then I usually stamp out several cards and I keep those in the stamp pockets as well to use later. And then once I have the stamp map figured out, I put the markers that I'm going to use in a bucket because that way I'm not constantly reaching to grab from my main storage of markers. Um, and it's just easier to do that way. So I put all the markers I'm going to need in one little bucket and I have them right next to me. And so to get started, I'm going to do the little guy with the yellow sweater and I was just referencing the different colors that I had uh, marked on my my color map and I'm going to start with the um, E series 41, 42, and 43 for the mouse and I have sped this up to like two times the speed I think um, even faster than that probably because you're going to see me color like four mice which I hope I still have your attention after <laughs> after that. But feel free to jump ahead if you are not interested in the coloring at all. I am not offended, so you should just jump ahead. Or um, if you want to stay engaged, then um, I'm going to show you that I'm doing just two colors with this sweater, Y21 and or YR21 and YR24. And I'm just going over where I think shadows should be, like under the elbow, kind of on the, you know, along the neckline, around his backside um, of the sweater, and just kind, kind of paying attention to where I think the darker areas of the sweater will be. And the same thing goes for the apple. You know, I start with a light color and I always go light to dark. And then I add in, you know, the darker reds around um, the apple where I think it should be darker. So I'm going to move on now to the little mouse with the red sweater. And I use the same E colors, 41, 42, and 43. And I'm just putting in the shading where I think it needs to be. I really kind of wing it. I don't use any, like, constant light source and all of my things to dictate where the shading should be. I I really just kind of go with my gut and where I think it should be darker and lighter and it usually turns out looking uh, pretty good. So I try not to make it too complicated for myself. I pull out the three different reds and I always go light to dark. So I color in the entire area with my lightest color first and make sure I have good coverage and it also wets the paper so that um, when you come in with your next color it blends a little bit easier because the paper is wet from the first layer. Um, adding a little brown vest to him kind of like a little Carhartt. Uh, that's what I had in my mind when I when I picked the color for his vest. I just thought it was a cute little Carhartt vest. And then I do the pumpkins in just a, um, two colors. I, I do bring in a a darker E color at the end just for a little bit more contrast. And the E07 right there and then I come back and I just blend that in with the wire 16. I have a little green onto the stem and I'm on to my last mouse for this card. Uh, you may have noticed I had the blue, um, the mouse with the little blue jacket already colored, which I cut out of the video because I didn't end up using that mouse for this card. I, I put her on a birthday card, which ended up really cute. Uh, I just thought she looked like she had that little offering of a, of a sprig with berries, and it, it just 
it struck me as it would be cute on a birthday card. So I cut her out and put her on a birthday card and then I use the other three mice for this card that I'm doing now. So this is just, um, I love this color combo of the green, the YG93 and the YG97. I just thought it looked very fallish and festive. Um, coming in with the same colors for the brown vest. I'm doing similar shadowing on both. Add the pink to the ears and then I'm going to color the basket and I'm going to give the basket a metal rim binder around the top. So I'm going to color the wood planks first with a light caramel color and then give it a little bit of contrast in between the planks where I think it should be darker. Blend that in and then I come in one shade darker and just add to that. And then I'm going to bring in a cool gray and just give it like a little metal binder rim around the, the barrel. And I just used two colors for the um, apples. I think those are apples. They look pretty small, but I'm pretty sure they're apples. And then I just kind of dot and um, fuss with just a little bit of contrast shading for the apples to give them a little bit more pop. So here are the four critters that I colored and I'm going to get ready to die cut them out. So this is what I did. I This is my initial thought and I had these um, this die cut from Dynamics which is kind of wonky circles which I love and then I decided I didn't want the cover to be white I wanted it to be in the Nina desert um, desert sand cardstock so I recut it and I got rid of the white And now I'm deciding that I need to have some color behind the circles. And so what I'm doing is I'm just tracing so I know where I need to put the color. And then I come in with some Distress Oxide inks and I'm going to give each of those little circles a background color. And I've decided on blue tumbled glass, squeezed lemonade, and uh, spiced marmalade, and I'm just like deciding the order that they want to be in, and so I decided to go with the yellow first, and this is, again, not rocket science, it's just, just straight ink blending. There's no, t no special technique to this at all. The only thing you have to do is make sure you don't run into the other side circles, so that's why I've put two pieces of paper down to to mask that out for me so I don't run into the side circles. And then I finish up with the blue. And I'm feeling courageous because I didn't put down a mask. But uh, it looks like I succeeded. So there we go. And I'm putting back the pieces in place again. And you're going to see that I'm still not happy with it. I want something more. So I've decided to take a background stamp from Unity Stamps and put that on to the Nina Desert Storm cardstock front. And I'm using My Favorite Things Craft Color Ink. And I think it's a uh, dye ink, not a pigment ink. And I actually really like how that turned out. And so now I'm going to do, since I've got the inking out, I'm just going to do the sentiment. And I've decided to do it on a cream colored cardstock. Please don't ask me what the name of the cardstock is because I don't know. I really don't separate my cardstock. I, when I order it, I, it all comes in and it kind of all goes into my bin of cardstock. So sometimes I know what it is and sometimes I don't. Um, I hope you don't judge me for that. And so here I am cutting down the, after I've embossed it, I'm cutting down the sentiment. And um, here I'm putting a little handle on it so that I can hold it in the right place. Because when your sentiment gets really thin sometimes with this particular tool, you can't 
hold it in place good enough. So I put a little handle on it like I just showed you with the just purple tape. Just tape a piece of cardstock onto it and it works like a charm. So here I am just kind of loading everything up to see how I like it. Still don't like the background so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to water splash them and have them react to the water. And the orange is great, but the blue and the yellow don't really react enough for me. So now what I'm going to do is do some uh, darker splatters on them. So I just took an ink block and or a um, acrylic block and smushed some ink on it with some water, used my paintbrush and splattered. Now I'm going to um, protect the other two areas so I don't splash on them. I'm going to splash the orange on there. And now I'm going to do the yellow. And I'm adding a little bit of orange to it so it's just a little bit darker so it is a contrast. And I end up liking that a lot. So here it is, dried, and I've kind of got the pieces in order. You're going to see the little um, middle guy comes out. I don't end up using him. I just figured it was too many mice. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting out a piece of craft foam for dimension, and I'm going to use that, there we go, use that to pop up. Instead of putting all kinds of foam tape down behind, I use just a die cut piece of craft foam. And that works out really well for me. I love doing that. And it's a little bit off in the edges. You can see I've got some white hanging over. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to trim that down. Super easy, you guys. I love using craft foam for dimension as opposed to foam tape. I bought a big huge bundle from Amazon, um, like a 50 pack of white and a 50 pack of black. Now here is an afterthought. I should have actually trimmed this out before I did any of this stuff, but I didn't think about it. So I took my um, stitch die rectangle and put it through my die cut machine hoping that it would get through all the layers and it did. Uh, it left a few rough edges, so I had to come in with the scissors and kind of just like shear those off, but that was no big deal at all. So once I did that, it was beautiful, and I had this um, dimensional top card, top layer to my card uh, that I will put, mount onto the card base, and I think it ends up looking really great in the end. So now I'm like, oh crap, I haven't trimmed this layer down. So <laughs> I feel like I'm doing everything backwards or, you know, uh, one step up behind in this. So I have to trim this card down now also so that it doesn't hang over the edge. And there, everything's all lined up. And I'm going to just grab my glue stick from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to glue this down. And I love to have the wiggle room to make sure it's all nice and straight. And so here we go. I am now adding the pieces. to each of the little windows um, and adding just scotch foam tape to the back. And I think I'm going to spare me taking off all of the tape, but I'm still just cutting and fussing with the different pieces of foam tape to make sure that they fit in the right places. And this one I have to cut back the top a little bit. Yeah. 
So, so far so good. This is how it's going to be laid out. Oh, and I think I've already taped everything down. I think I skipped over that part. I spared you that. So everything's taped down up top. And now I'm just putting on the sentiment. Adding a little pumpkin just for kicks. And then I've chosen a green card base. Again, don't ask me where this came from because I honestly don't know. I need to probably be better at that, especially if I do videos. But I don't know where it came from. I I want to say it's... Mm, I want to say it's MFT, but I can't say for sure. I have just so many different cardstocks. Um, so now I'm just using my tape gun and I'm mounting the front of this to the green card base, which I think looks really nice. I love the green. It sets off the sweater. And now I am doing my insert, which I always do. And I was going to leave it blank and then after I walked away and let it sit for a minute, I decided no, I don't want to leave it blank. Um, I was going to put that little guy in there and I changed my mind. And what I ended up doing was putting Happy Thanksgiving inside. Uh, so the front says, wishing you a harvest of blessings. And then inside it says, Happy Thanksgiving. And I got rid of the little guy and added that with the pumpkin. So that is my card. This one took a little bit longer than I would have liked just because I didn't plan it out very well. But in the end, uh, I really uh, love how this came out. If you're still with me and you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, by all means do. And stay tuned for the next video.